So this is the discussion of the module 6 entitled Data Link Layer. In this, this, uh, in this module, we are to cover um, functions, uh, components of the data link layer. We look into some of the typologies that we have in a wide area network and local area network. And we'll discuss data link frames. Uh, so again, the data link layer is... Uh, the second of the lower layer, it is connected to the physical, okay, physical layer. We've, we've covered during our OSI that there are two uh, components under data link layer. We have the, the LAN card and the switch. Okay. Uh, so the um, data link layer is the one, like specific, specifically the LAN card, it is the one that uh, uh, where our cables is connected. So uh, one function of the data link layer is to um, prepare the uh, frame during bit transmission. Okay, uh, that's one function of the data link layer. Uh, there's a specific function in the, the data link layer in terms of preparing the signal uh, going to the cables. Um, it, uh, it has a role or function of the encoding and the signaling mechanism. Okay. Um, Another, if, say, during receiving, if the data is to be passed on the upper layer going up, a uh, function of the data link is to also prepare the frame uh, to its upper layer, network layer, okay, which is the network layer, okay. So, take note the data link is in the middle of the physical and of the network. So, um, there's two functions when we talk about data link layer function of preparing the frame going to the, the the frame is the encapsulated data in the data link preparing the frame going to the physical and preparing the frame going to the network layer okay um, um aside from uh, those functions uh, that i talk about uh, preparing the frame to the physical or to the cables like encoding and signaling um, other than that other functions of the data link is error detection uh, Take note, we mentioned during the discussion in the physical that errors are being encountered, okay? Um, and there are mechanisms that can detect errors and LAN card has that, okay? LAN card also has a way to um, deal with corrupted frames and that is reject, rejecting it. So IEEE uh, has standards in relation to data link layer. Okay. Uh, well, in fact, as I mentioned, the data link is in between the physical and network. So what IEEE did with the data link layer is it divides the data link into two sublayers, LLC and then the MAC. Okay. LLC, if you notice, it's on top. Whatever functions that are there in the LLC, it has something to do with preparing the frame going up, going to the network layer. Okay, the ability of the uh, data link layer component, say a LAN card, to recognize uh, network layer protocols, say IPv4 or IPv6, these are all um, these are all written in the LLC sublayer. Okay, that is the role of the LLC sublayer. While the MAC MAC sublayer MAC stands for Media Access Control, it is the one responsible for um, say data encapsulation, media access control, uh, and in general, preparing the frame, okay, uh, from this data link going down, going to the physical uh, physical layer, okay? So again, LLC is going to the network layer, MAC is to the physical. Aside uh, from the, the uh, what I just discussed a while ago about the LLC and MAC, there are also other protocols under data link layer developed by these organizations, ISO, ANSI, and ITU. Uh, and then we look into the topologies. Again, we have two types of topology, physical and logical topology. Okay? Um, if, if you have a floor plan and you lay down specific posi positions of your devices, these are end devices and your network devices, and you specifically lay down draw, okay, the um, proper position 
of or location of your cables in your in the floor area that is an example of a physical topology of course there should be labels okay uh, observe la proper labeling um, uh, Cisco has a separate training program where network design is a detail is discussed in detail that is CCDA Cisco certified design associate okay so our, our agenda here in this discussion is just as an overview of what physical and logical topology is okay a logical topology defines data flow we will be familiar a lot with uh, a lot with logical topology because we are to um, connect we, we are to work on uh, network topologies a lot because we'll deal with configurations of switches and routers okay so um, like the exercise we had last time uh, that is one example in the packet tracer that is one example of a logical topology so in the logical topology it um, uh, shows how network devices are connected okay, together with the end devices that's the whole agenda of the logical topology its basic function is to merely define data flow uh, there are uh, common topologies uh, topology in, in my opinion is concept no a uh, one topology concept so there's this what we call as a point-to-point -to -point topology okay uh, in a point-to-point -point is there is a dedicated connection from one node to another node or say from one router to another router in a real scenario it's like from one branch to another branch say Mapua Makati to Mapua Intramuros say uh, its connection is a least line okay we will discuss this line in uh, module 3 so Cisco module 3 so if it's a list line there is a dedicated connection from one campus say Makati campus to Intramuros campus that is one example of a point-to-point -point. in hub and spoke it's similar to a star uh, in a star topology you have a central device and this is these are these central devices these are these are where other nodes are connected okay so like in one topology uh, one good example of a hub there is this a le legacy wide area network technology we call as a frame relay so in a frame relay uh, say like a bank say BDO okay and let's say BDO branches are connected to through this uh, frame relay network so in a frame relay there is a frame relay switch okay it sits in the service provider it is in the service provider and this is this frame relay switch these are where other branches are connected other these are where BDO branches are connected so it uses that hub and spoke okay we call that again as a hub and spoke uh, a mesh uh, like example BDO branches if all if each and every other branches are connected together so that's uh, uh, an example of a mesh okay very expensive but good thing is it provides high availability because there's uh, too much redundant connection okay so again in a point-to-point -point, like this I have a scenario here say example given this is Mapu node one is Mapua Makati the other one is Mapua Intramuros there is a dedicated connection okay uh, connecting these two branches so we call this as a point-to-point -point, okay there's there's no other um, network devices there may be a network device like a multiplexer but then again it just terminates the wire to connect this node 1 going here directly to node 2 okay uh, there so also we have topologies in a local area network so we have the bus the, the, this is a legacy type of a topology in a bus you have a single backbone cable made up of coaxial and this one we call this as a t connector it's a t connector like a splitter okay i i suppose you know what a splitter is you buy it in the hardware let's say you have you have you have uh, you are subscri you subscribe to sky cable and you have five tvs at home you want to connect the cable line to all of these five tv you buy a splitter similar to this one okay so you connect all your computers there on the single backbone together with the T connector and then you have a terminator here at the at, e, at the ends of the cable okay the terminator this one we call this the circle one we call that as a terminator it prevents the signal from bouncing okay
Okay? That is the old way of connecting our computers. That's the first, actually, that, that's the first way we connect our computers in the history. Uh, problem with that is it's not scalable. If you have many computers, say, for example, 1,000, uh, there's no way uh, the traffic can be managed. Cables do not have a means to manage the traffic. So we expect too much congestion. Okay? So after the, bu the bus, then uh, next is the ring. Okay, in a ring, okay, uh, it like it has two land cards. Physical ring, huh? In a physical ring type, there are two land cards. One land card is connected to the other, and then until such, until it will form a ring. Okay. The good thing with this physical ring is, uh, if uh, if there is a uh, there is a disconnection on this part, still you have an alternative path. Not like with the bus, if uh, the backbone cables damage, then you don't have any network. Okay. Nowadays we are using a star. Like in the star, there is a uh, here in the in the middle you have a hub or a switch. Okay. So this switch, it's a a network device that can manage our network, and these are where our end devices are connected. If you have two or more switches, we call it as an extended star. Okay. Um, later we'll cover media access control in there. There's also what we call as a logical ring, okay? A logical ring, uh, topology. Uh, it's a to token ring. Uh, and logical ring topology is used by this token ring technology. We'll discuss that, we'll, we'll discuss that further later. Uh, we have two uh, duplex communication, a half duplex and a full duplex. Um, actually, when we refer on duplex uh, in uh, mo when we refer on uh, modes of communication, we have three. There's simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. Simple, simplex, a device may only act as a transmitter and receiver. One popular example of a simplex is a TV. Diba? A TV only acts as a uh, a receiver, and then the transmitter is let's say channel seven or channel two. Nga. So. Uh, and then we have the half duplex. In half duplex is it can send and receive alternately, not at the same time. Okay? It only allows either to send or to receive. Um, one good example of a half duplex is walkie-talkie, right? If you remember the ones used by taxi or FX, okay? They use this walkie-talkie. There are some who, do, who, who uses that. You cannot talk the two parties cannot talk at the same time, not like in a phone, in a mobile phone. Okay, well, because there's only a single frequency, a single channel that is used for transmit and receive. So they cannot talk, uh, two parties cannot talk at the same time. Uh, they, they, they talk alternately. So that's a half duplex. Okay, uh, in network devices, a hub, a hub falls under half duplex. As uh, uh, a full duplex, uh, and one network device under full duplex is a switch, you can simul simultaneously transmit and receive at the same time. You can transmit and receive at the same time. It's simultaneous. Uh, one popular example of full duplex is a switch. Nga. In communication devices, cell phone okay, is uh, also in full duplex mode. Uh, we have these uh, access control methods and we have two. Contention-based and controlled access. Okay, there's a two there's two popular um, LAN technology we have, Ethernet and Token Ring. Okay, uh, we will explore more on this. I will even show you a website, example like in eBay, for you to have a clear picture of what Ethernet and Token Ring is. But the point here is that a switch. There's an Ethernet type of a switch. There's also a token ring type of a switch. Okay, that's how it is. So, if a switch is of Ethernet type, okay, all devices, uh, all network devices, not only switch, but also a router, a hub, a LAN card, there are those that are of Ethernet, Ethernet type. So, if it's Ethernet type, that is contention-based. Okay, contention-based. In contention-based, whenever a switch would send data or a hub, it will send to it will be sent to all it uses broadcast and then the problem with broadcast there is a collision a collision of course when two or more pc sends at the same time okay but ethernet network devices has a means to um 
manage the collision. It has this CSMA CD, Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detect. That's what it means. Okay. Uh, and then also for wireless, collision also occurs. And a way to manage collision for wireless is the CSMACA. Okay. So again, just like uh, in a road, if there's collision, expect traffic, right? It uh, adds on the congestion in our network. Okay, but then again, there's uh, there are means for Ethernet devices and Ethernet hub to manage collision. Okay, uh, the controlled access, like the token ring, there are token ring routers, there are token ring switch, token ring hub. There's no collision. Okay, there's no collision. Okay, but among these two, you know what? The most popular is Ethernet. The problem with token ring is, um, I hope you can visualize it. I know when I narrate it. Say, if I have four computers connected, okay, um, the solution for token ring uh, for, to, to uh, totally remove collision is only one PC can send at a time, okay? It do not allow sending uh, computers at the same time, okay? So, the problem with token ring is that there's too much idle, there's too much waiting time. This is the reason why... Token ring was not embraced in the market, not like e the Ethernet. Okay, most of those network devices that we see in the market, most of them are Ethernet type. So better be very careful when you uh, check your specs. Ng, uh, check the specs of our network devices. Okay, so again, um, Ethernet contention based. Okay. Um, has it has a mean to manage the collision and that's the SMA CD okay this is a uh, no, it uses a collision collision detection process okay um, uh, during our live session I will discuss this uh, further this uh, CSMA CD I have uh, I have a YouTube video where there is an animation for you to have a clear picture on how CSMA CD works for wireless, we have CSMACA. Okay, CSMACA. There. And then, format for the frame. Again, uh, we mentioned during the OSI discussion that a data, when it is passed through our network and it goes down to the lower layers in the OSI, the data is being encapsulated. Meaning of encapsulated is that there are added informations on our data. Uh, and then uh, there are three parts okay, uh, for the encapsulation process. So, of course, we have the data and then there's the header and then the trailer. Header is the added information before the data. Trailer are the added information after the data. So, this is how it looks like. So, with the frame... Like added information in the header, we have the frame start. It is a signal that indicates the start of the frame. And then the address. The address, this, this address here, it refers to the layer 2 address, which is our MAC. It includes the source and destination uh, MAC or layer 2 address. The type, um, this identifies layer 3 protocol. And then we have control services under here. And then the data. And then at the trailer, you have the error detection and then a signal that indicates the stop of the frame. Okay, so we have to be very familiar with the frame fields. Uh, um, familiarizing ourselves with this format, with the data encapsulation, this is very important, especially in cybersecurity. You know what? In security, um, there are tools where you can see these added informations and uh, it helps to know who are the attackers looking at these added informations it also helps by looking at these added informations to know if there is an attack okay specific attacks no so as for the layer 2 address again our end devices will have a layer 2 address also known as physical or mac address uh, the moment we install a LAN card in our computer so again LAN, the layer 2 address is coming from our LAN card Whatever MAC address that the LAN card has, that will be the MAC address of our computer. Uh, whenever our computer, say like this one, the source will send data, our data is being encapsulated by a MAC address or a layer 2 address, source and destination to be exact. Okay, so that's how it works. Yeah, 
So, uh, other details for the Mac I in this next slide. So, layer 2 uh, Mac address is 48 bits in total. Its format is in hexadecimal. And just like with IP, it has two parts. There's the OUI, okay, Organizational Unique Identifier, uh, the, which is the first six hexadecimal. For example, ha, uh, this is the MAC address, ano, 00602F3A07BC. So the first six hexadecimal digits, that's the OUI. Uh, this is an identifier of the ma manufacturer or the vendor. Okay, so, uh, and then the last six hexadecimal is vendors assigned. So, the vendor will generate its own last six hexadecimal. So, this is unique to the that specific LAN card. Okay. There. So, that rule is um, a requirement of the IEEE. And that ends this module. Keep safe and together we learn as one. Well.